Have you ever had an idea for an app, a game, a website that you wanted to spin up a proof of concept really quick or even a full blown app, but you didn't want to write as much code for it and you just want to see it come together? If so, I have something to show you. It's called GitHub Spark. GitHub Spark is a product by GitHub that is in technical preview right now. So you would need to sign up to get access to it. And they have a waiting list essentially that they slowly iterate and let more people in on. I just personally got access to it, which is drove the idea to share this with you all. And the idea behind GitHub Spark is that it's going to allow you to create these small sparks as they call them micro apps that can be tailored to your exact needs and preferences. So it is an NL natural language based editor, which allows easily describing your ideas and then refining them over time. Okay. It's a managed runtime environment, which hosts your sparks, your micro apps, and provides them access to data storage, theming, and LLMs, large language models, a PWA enabled dashboard. So progressive web app, which lets you manage and launch your sparks from anywhere. Additionally, GitHub Sparks allows you to share your sparks with others and control whether they get read only or read write permissions. They can choose to favorite the spark and use it directly or even remix it in order to further adapt it to their preferences because you know, personalization as they put it in here. They have a couple of videos that you can watch to learn more about it if you'd like. And then they explain what micro apps are. And it's basically based on the Unix philosophy for apps, meaning you have things that have specific purposes and they just solely focus on those small tailored purposes and they don't escalate in terms of feature sets and adding to the complexity of those apps. So that's the focus of this. Some of the examples that the team that built this, by, by the way, I forgot to call that out. Devin, Turkle, Cole, and Alice are the folks that have made it and are working on it, but it's for building and sharing personalized micro app sparks, right? So some of the examples that they did is they created an allowance tracker for kids. They had their own kids, a six-year-old in particular, create an animated world of vehicles and then a karaoke night and app for tracking a weekly karaoke night along with the status of each invited guest. And then a map app that allows searching for cities by name using an LLM to generate a fun TLDR description of it created by and used by a 10 year old for school. So this is really interesting. I have not tried it out with my own kids just yet. I've just dabbled very briefly when I first got access before recording this video. So there's a couple of other examples here, but it's pretty interesting to me because it's another AI based tool. And as you know, on the channel, we've been pretty heavily focused on checking out that along with the security of them. So one other key thing about GitHub Spark is that it is app centric and not code centric. And what that means essentially is it's a fully managed runtime environment. And the focus is supposed to be around you interacting with the tool and describing what you want and letting the tool build it out for you. And you're not building it. So I don't know that this is exactly tailored for developers in the traditional sense where you have a tool that's going to help you write your code and build out the apps that you want. I think it's more generally focused to people that maybe have some technical background, but also people that don't have a technical background so that they can quickly and easily spin up an app for their needs. So the idea with this having a managed runtime is it allows you to have a deployment free hosting with them, themable design system, persistent data storage and integrated model prompting. So what they mean by deployment free hosting is that you're not spending time writing the code, having to deploy it and all that fun stuff. What you end up doing is acting through a single interface, expressing your ideas through natural language as they call out here. And it's all hosted there. And apparently you can install it on your desktop, tablet or mobile device via progressive web app PWA. So that's super interesting. I haven't tried that out yet. We'll see if we can get that covered here as well. Now, when they talk about themable design in the interface, you have the ability to change like the accent color and the border radiuses and how to scale things, what, whether it's a light or dark theme, all of that is customizable via the interface and it automatically gets reflected in the micro app or spark in this case. Then for persistent data storage, and this has been a little bit kind of wonky to me in my very brief experience with it. It allows you to store data directly via the app. And then you can also interact with that data via the interface as well when you're building out the spark. And last but not least, when they talk about integrated model prompting, apparently you can add generative AI features to these sparks, these micro apps without any knowledge of LLMs. On top of that, it provides the prompt editor that lets you see the prompts that were used to generate that micro app, that spark, and enables you to tweak them how you need so that it can iterate on that app that you had it build. All right, without further ado, though, let's jump right into using a GitHub Spark and build out something with it. 
first things first, in order to get access, you're going to have to come to the GitHub Spark page, which is at githubnext.com slash projects GitHub Spark. I'll have a link in the description below. And you're going to want to click on the technical preview link here, which is going to have you sign in through your GitHub account and get you added to the wait list so that you'll be notified via email when you get access over a period of time. Once you get that notification that you've been added to have access to it, you're going to go to spark.githubnext.com sign in with your GitHub account again, and you'll see a prompt like this. In here, you're gonna be able to type in what you want, but before you go and do that, you have some options you can choose from, the different models that you wanna to use to generate this GitHub Spark, this micro app. I have it set to Claude Sonnet 3.5 right now. These are the only options that are available at the time of this recording. Maybe more will be added in the future. We have GPT 4.0, O1 Preview, and O1 Mini. Do you also notice there's this variance option? What that does is it gives you like three different versions that the model will generate for the type of app that you're prompting it to create. We'll turn that on so you can see what that's like. So what are we going to build? All right, before we go and try and think of our own app, let's use one of the examples that they give us down below. There's a password generator tool, a recipe collection app, and a habit tracking app. I'm going to go with the password generating tool for security theme. So I click on that and it starts going. Right away, we can see that it is hypertuning, defragmenting imagination. We got some code going on here. It looks like it's using React and HTML, making magic happen. Left-hand side is where we can iterate and refine this Spark and our prompt. We have our prompts here. Your Spark doesn't include any AI features yet. That's okay. This is where we could change that theme I was talking about earlier, light and dark, all that fun stuff. But it looks like it's still working on some things. Build a tool that generates secure passwords based on user specific criteria and it used Claude Sonnet 3.5 for that. Okay, cool. There we go. So in the middle, we have the code, the HTML for that, which is just a div. So it's not even HTML. It's not like a straight up website that you can just copy paste from here. It's div ID root, and then it attaches a React app, which I wonder if you could use anything other than React for this, that'd be kind of interesting or helpful. In addition to that, it looks like it's using components that are specific library for github spark so that's interesting as well it's very tailored to that it, to me i'm getting hints here that it's limited in the sense of what i can do outside of the scope of this environment it's very tightly coupled with github spark in that ecosystem if, if you will so on the right hand side we see the output though there's a password generator and we can look at that we can refresh it we can copy it let's see if i copy it delete that no i can't delete that but can i paste it in the code here is that actually copying no, it doesn't look like, can I, uh, yeah, I can edit the code. Okay, so you can edit the code directly in here if you wanted to. We can include numbers or not, lowercase or not, keep it like that. It looks like it's not actually copying. It's not copying to my clipboard, so there might be some permissions issues with my browser maybe limiting that, but everything else seems to be working correctly. Now, if we wanted to, I can say, how about we do this? Let's iterate on it. Add a meter to indicate the level of strength or the generated password. Let's see what that does. What are these other options we have here? We have this crosshair kind of looking thing and then some settings. So we could change that. It didn't do the actual variance on that one, I guess. We can we'll leave that for now. What does this do? Oh, it shows where you want to focus maybe? Interesting. I'm not sure how to best use this, but maybe we could tell it to like put it in this area and let's go let's see what it does. Crafting digital experiences, defragmenting imagination. We did that before too. This is also interesting. It seems to be rewriting the entire code for the app instead of just augmenting it, modifying specific sections to add to that change that we made there. Okay, cool. We got password strength now. So if I make this shorter in length, we can see the password strength is getting smaller. Oh, there we go. We got a red and changed colors too. That's pretty neat. To me, early on impression of this is very good tool to use for prototyping things and getting ideas on paper, if you will, right? Then it's offering other suggestions now too. We can add a button to save generated passwords to a list, add a feature to rate the generated password based on common password strength criteria, add a tool tip to explain the password strength meter. Okay, I like that. Let's do that. Iterate on it. Shaving a yak. Really? <laughs> I love these little like progress being made messages. Synchronizing binary beats. Very creative. Also like the little little sparkly icons floating up like that. It's very cool. Very fun. Uh, did that actually do what it said it was going to do? Add a tool tip to explain it. Okay. So if I hover, oh, if I hover over it. Password strength is determined by length, use of numbers, symbol, and cutoffs. If 
Do I shrink this down a little bit? Oh, there we go. Maybe because I was too zoomed in there. Symbols and mixed case letters. All right, nice. So you get the idea. This is pretty, it can be pretty handy. However, I'm noticing like the limitation here from a developer perspective is maybe I start off with a proof of concept for an idea that I have here to get it going, but trying to transform this from here to a full-blown application that I want to have more control over, I'm kind of limited in that regard. And I, I think that's because that's meant to be outside the scope of this. It's not the purpose of this tool, this service, GitHub Spark, is to build something here and stay here type of thing. Uh, let's try changing the theme really quick so we can just see what that looks like. There we go, light mode, my eyes are blinded. We can scale things more. Corner radius, border radius, we can make that more square if you want that type of, and you can see it changing in real time. That's really nice to see. So like some customization here, but not like a ton, oh, even that app icon. I wonder how that plays into this. Icon style, regular, you can change the font of things, accent colors. Okay, that's nice. There you go. You can theme things quite a bit. So the theming is nice to have this level of customization, but there's room for improvement to add more customization to things that I might want to do here. On the top right hand corner, I'm looking at the menu items that we have here. We can have add to favorites. We can fix that iteration. We can share the spark, maximize preview, and then enter full screen mode. I wonder if we click on this, what's it going to do? It's thinking. We can revert, we can revert and retry. Is this a problem with the current implementation? The visual feedback for password actions copy generate is lacking. Users have no indication if the copy succeeded when a new password was generated. I like that idea actually, I'm gonna go with it. Solving the halting problem. So that's kind of cool that it recognized some of the gaps in the functionality and the experience of using the app and came up with a suggestion to iterate on it. I like that, that's pretty helpful. So now, hmm, hmm. So it was nice that it recognized that, but the end result of this didn't seem to help with that exactly that happened here. Please fix this problem. We look at the history here. Please fix this problem. The visual feedback for password actions, copy and generate is lacking. Users have no indication if the copy succeeded or when the password was generated. So I don't think a lot is going on there with that. Still not able to copy. Again, that might be just something limit, limited to the permissions I have on this website via my browser. All right, one other thing I wanna see if we're capable of changing the front end framework that's being used. So in this case, it's using React. I wonder if I can tell it to switch from React to something like, I don't know, Vue or Svelte. And when I did that, it did indeed create this script.js. So that's kind of cool, but it didn't stop this from doing its thing. And there must be something wrong or going on here. Logs, we got logs now. Minified React error, the requested module, phosphorus, or icons view does not provide an exported name. So that seemed to break things, but at least we get the logs to get that in. It was a little bit hard to notice that like, this popped up. It would've been nice if that was a little bit more visible and in my face to let me know that something was going on there, but I think we just broke it. <laughs> it's probably both of these are competing with each other too, but then we can see that like, it's just this white screen, blank screen. So let's see, can it fix this? I don't want it to fix React. And I'm not, I'm trying to switch away from React to view. Maybe we need to fix this. Let's try that. All right, I'm back from trying to get it to fix that syntax error and uh, still no luck with it. So, you know, keep in mind it is in this beta, this preview phase right now. So things are not gonna always work according to plan or be perfect and have everything all tidied up. We can expect these types of things to happen, but Okay, we're seeing the limitations that we have so far. Let's switch from this now, now that we broke it and try and build something different. All right, so the idea I'm thinking of here is to test out how interactive these sparks can get in the sense of, I wanna have it prompt us to log in for the app and whether or not it can handle an OAuth flow, like logging in with GitHub or Google, something like that. And then on top of that, let's have it build a game with one level to it where you have to solve some type of cryptographic puzzle maybe. Okay, so let's give that a shot. I'm gonna type out what we want and see where it goes from here. It's so already generating code really fast, which has a handle login, logging in with provider. How is it going to provide? It's got Google and GitHub, Phosphor icons, React, okay. We have a login button. That was pretty fast. So credit there for how quickly it spun up this app. Now, whether or not the game is fully implemented, we'll see, but there's a login button. So if I click on that, okay, I wanna log in with GitHub didn't actually log in. It didn't actually implement the flow for logging in with GitHub, the OAuth flow there. Solve the cryptographic puzzle. Enter your puzzle input. 
how many R's are in the word strawberry solve. All right, so not exactly what I was expecting or hoping for in terms of a cryptographic puzzle, but especially with the login flow and the puzzle piece of it, but maybe let's try iterating on it a little bit more and see if we can get it to be a bit better. So I see one of the suggestions on the left-hand side here is add more complex cryptographic puzzles with varying difficulty levels. Let's give that a shot. I'm clicking on that. We're shaving a yak again. Oh yeah. What are the logs? Logging in with GitHub. Maybe it took logs as literal, like logging, but it's weird that it would have these options. <laughs> okay, we can go easy, medium. Let's go with hard. How many R's are in strawberry? Solved. Whoa. Okay, so I think I'm getting an idea of what it's doing now. It's basically taking what I put in here and like cryptically encoding it, if you will, maybe. Well, let's look at the code. So the code here, puzzle game, solve puzzle, which is the, the function or, or the button we're clicking. So this is the function that's getting called when we click on that button, right? Okay, so here's the puzzle game. We got easy, medium, hard, puzzle output. Here's the puzzle input, solve puzzle on click. Okay, so we were right about that. So when we do that, based on difficulty being easy, medium, hard, so this one, it's just reversing the string. Caesar cipher with shift three. Okay, so it's kind of getting the idea. And then simple XOR cipher with key 42. Okay. All right. So I think it's kind of going in the direction that we were intending there. Uh, and so you'd have to figure out that to how to reverse this to get the original message there. But I really wanted it to give me like this output. And then I have to try and solve what the, what that is. So I don't know if we can get to that point in this, but, uh, Add hints for each difficulty level to help players solve the puzzles. Okay, let's try that. Assembling digital building blocks. Debugging rubber ducks. We log in again, not really logging in. Hint, try reversing the input string. Hint, think about shifting each letter by a few positions. And then hint, consider using a bitwise operation. Okay, really cool. Uh, well, interesting that it has hint, hint like that. <laughs> but you get the idea. So we can continue to iterate on this to get it to be more of what we want but i think we've scratched enough of the surface of this to get an idea of what github spark is all about here now the other thing i'm curious about that i've not seen via sharing the spark or any of the other options here is it mentions being able to install this as an app somehow and i just don't see that anywhere on the website so i'm not sure i can rename it i can delete it i can star it and then i can share that spark so i think maybe that capability has not been implemented just yet or i just haven't found it yet if you know let me know down in the comments below but on that note my personal assessment of this is it's a really cool tool to use that's ai based to help generate and get a proof of concept together really quickly it's quite limited in its capabilities which is understandable because of the state of the project but also a little bit worrying in the sense of like from a developer perspective if I want to get more in depth with this thing and build it out to be something more complex, I can't use this as a starting point and then pull it over into something that builds things out more. That's where I would probably lean on something like Bolt by StackBlitz uh, if you are interested in checking something that out. And we have a video on that that you can check out as well. I'm curious though, what are your thoughts? How would you potentially use GitHub Spark? What are some use cases that you have that could be fun? Let me know in the comments below and I'd love to try them out myself too. On that note though, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.